We've had a chance to chat with the coaches and some of the players leading into the PJHL Final Four. It will all culminate in Woodstock next Friday on May 12th, all presented by Milk Up. A unique perspective here now from Steve Sumka, who is a South Conference manager. Good to see you, Steve. I know we've seen each other in the rinks the last couple of weeks in the South Conference Championship and Doherty Championship. I think what you've really got is a unique perspective on the Wellesley Applejacks, who are obviously in this Final Four. I know you wrote some notes down on just kind of go through what you think has made the Apple Jacks successful. Well, the Apple Jacks have had a great playoff run. They have been incredibly disciplined. Uh, they have been, they have worked incredibly hard as a team. Like from the start, from their first round series against Hespeler, mm -hmm. uh, they, they've really brought their game along as the series, as each series comes along and they're working incredibly hard. The coaching staff, everybody's engaged and everybody seems to know what they're no one takes a shift off mm -hmm. everybody's out there working their tail off and that's the one thing that i've noticed uh and like i said i or what i did notice more than anything going back to game six against new hamburg in the doherty final in there in their that third period they played to seal the deal against new hamburg they showed me a level of discipline and commitment that was just first rate. And they've just taken that on now moving forward. So, and the, and the thing I remember about that game too was New Hamburg scored first, right? Yeah. So they, they kind of had to bounce back there in the second period. Curtis Butler scored the go-ahead goal that made it 2-1. I think it was Katsubi that scored in the empty net. And I know you got a lot of good things to say about Isaiah Katsubi as well. He – Isaiah has had a great playoff and uh, I even go, I'll even go back to regular season. Uh, Isaiah was, uh, was one of our players of the month in the Doherty mm -hmm. and uh, at full marks for that. And come playoff time, he's played 20 games. He's got 14 goals, 13 assists for 27 points and two penalty minutes. And He's making stuff happen out there. He's playing special teams. He's doing everything. And just the way he sees the ice and is feeding his teammates. Like I know his his he's balanced in terms of his point total, both goals and assists. Yeah. But he's scoring on the power play. He's contributing at even strength. Like it's happening in all aspects of his game. It's he's he's been lights out. He's been really good. I know Noah Bender, goaltender. Um, this kid is 16 years old. He's been unbelievable in these playoffs. And I, I remember being on the ice there. We were together in, in Glanbrook after they won game five there. And the players handed that uh, PGHL South Conference Championship flag to Noah. And he was kind of skating around with it. And they said, he's the only player that is going to put this, this flag on his back. And, you know, they were calling him Superman on the ice. And I know you've seen the same thing. Yeah, he's where Noah started at the beginning of the year. And again, I've had an opportunity to watch him play uh, probably out of the 16, out of the 16 games I've watched Wellesley play this year, six of those, 10 of those games have been in the playoffs. And he's been, his level of play from the start of the year to where he is now, he's only gone in one direction and that's up. He's been, he's been a tower of strength. He's worked hard. Um, the way he makes directional saves, especially the way he covers the bottom of the ice, mm -hmm. his, his positioning has been fabulous. And um, I think he's only been pulled in one game, and that was just to kind of get him out of there and give him a break. Right. And But he's been consistent from start to finish. He's worked hard, and I... Why not keep it going into the final four? He's been he's been really he's been he's been worth watching. He's been great. Yeah, played for the Water the Wolves coming through, got drafted by the Oshawa Generals. Uh, and like you say, he's been a superstar with the Apple Jacks. Who are some of the other players? I know you kind of had a couple of players on a list that you wrote down that have been <sighs> Yeah, I've actually got yeah, outside, three more outside, guys. yeah, outside of Noah, outside of Noah and Isaiah, I've got three forwards and three defensemen that I've that I've kind of circled. And I, I'll start with the defenseman first. Yeah. The one guy, these all three of these, Tristan Romani, Kobe Neal uh, Sealing, and Mitch Penner have all played 20 playoff games. 
and they don't have, you know, their point totals aren't the greatest. Mick, actually, Sealing's got two goals and 10 assists for 12 points, and he's only taken two penalty minutes. And Tristan and Mitch both only have 10 minutes in penalties. Mm -hmm. They have been, again, they have been rock solid back there, and I'm not trying to take away from any of the other players. Everybody's made a contribution. Everybody's worked hard. But for me, those are the three guys on the blue line that have really shown a lot for me. And they've been just a tower of strength out there. We'll get into the forwards in a second. I want to touch on the Kobe ceiling thing because I think he's got an amazing story. He's an overage defenseman. His dad used to be a coach of the Apple Jacks, you know, quote, back in the day. Um, I had a chance to chat with him at Apple Jacks practice, and they just have a real loose, excited attitude, feeling good. And he's saying, this is the best season that we've ever had in franchise history, and we're not done yet. They have a really good attitude about that whole job's not done thing. Um, and if that back end, like you talk about with Penner, you know, Romani, who's a physical defenseman, uh, Kobe Sealing, who obviously is good puck moving defenseman, can get it out of his own zone. Why not the Apple Jacks? And I, I, I'm, I'm unbiased in my opinion because – I, I'm not attached to any team. I'm, you know, I'm a league, I'm a league official, but at the same time, it's uh, seeing how these guys have played, seeing how they've collectively worked, not just collectively as a team, but individual performances. Because again, I've, I've had a chance to talk to a lot of the players as the season has gone on. Mm -hmm. You see them and I interact with the coaching staff and obviously with Brock Gerber, the director of hockey operations. So it's, it's just great to see, how these kids have elevated their game and have taken it to a point where, yeah, I'm not going to sell them short. I don't think there's a level of expectation on the Apple Jacks simply because the other three teams in the final four were here last year and Wellesley wasn't. It was, and, and that's why I think they go in, they'll go into the tournament with, why not just feel loose feel you're you're sure you're happy to be here but it's not over yet and i and i'll take it even back to january going back to um january 10th the trade deadline day mm -hmm. and some of the moves the team made and they brought players in guys were moved because some guys were moved around uh, even players like that you may not expect to see like a tristan hewanick mm -hmm. tristan's a big kid works hard uh he's physical but he's chipped in at times with some timely goals a couple of timely goals and yeah he's a force to be reckoned with out there so when you see guys like that and again i'm not trying to just just uh, not saying anything disparaging about anybody because again collectively as a team they've all worked really hard and they they're and and my hat's off to them they, they've all made contributions. Every one of those guys were in a uniform. And you're kind of mentioning the depth there a little bit. And one thing that comes to mind for me, again, being in Glenbrook in game five for that clinching game there, who scored the first goal was Dimitri Elef Terriatis. So you yeah. can talk about depth. I've seen Carson Wicke score more overtime goals than you ever want to think about, you know, but you get to the forward group, you know, you talk about Kyle Baker, Carson Wicke, um, you know, they got some studs and some horses up front. Who are the yeah. who are those forwards? You mentioned you had a couple of forwards kind of jotted down in your notepad. Well, McCombs, McCombs, McCombs has been rock solid, too. Captain, of course. Yeah, of course. He has. Baker has. The one guy who's been – another guy who's played 20 games. He has six goals and 10 assists. He's got 22 penalty minutes, but Baker's even got 33 penalty minutes. Is Adam Hoff. No kidding. Adam Hoff has been fabulous he's grit he's sandpaper he's he's everything that he's everything that agitates your opponent and do you want him on your team you sure do and again he's another guy he's been he's shown a lot of discipline takes it to a certain level mm -hmm. and then but he nobody's crossing the line and this is what's making the Apple Jacks effective, in my opinion. Well, they're a scrappy team. 
right? They they're, are. They're going to knock you around. You're going to be bruised a little bit when yeah. the game's over, when you play the Wellesley Applejacks. But if they play on the right side of the line, you know, here's an example. How many times have you seen Adam Hoff drive to the net? He's in the goaltender's face. Maybe he gets a tip. Maybe he gets a rebound. Yeah. That's Adam's game. And he does it so effectively. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing when you've got balanced scoring like that, and you've got not only your top six, but you got, you know, third line guys, fourth line guys contributing. Um, Wellesley becomes pretty dangerous. And the other thing too, maybe for the other teams and let me know what you think on this. They don't know a lot about the Apple Jacks, a partly because they weren't there last year, but obviously, yeah. you know, they don't play in the same division and stuff. So um, Wellesley kind of comes in. Sure. They're a little bit of a dark horse, I guess, but if the other teams know nothing about you, they're going to learn that they're going to be battered pretty quickly. I think once their game again, the round Robin against the Apple Jacks is, is over. Right. Yeah. No. I, and, and again, I don't see Wellesley. I don't see Wellesley. Uh, why would they change their style of play? 100%. Going into going into where we are right now at the round robin starting tomorrow night, it's it's not going to happen. They're gonna they're gonna play the same way they. I don't expect them to change. They're gonna play the same way they have since the playoffs started, and for the most part, the regular season. The other thing I like is the community support. And I like that in every junior hockey center that I go to, you know, specifically in the in the PJHL Doherty because we do a lot of work in that division. They call it the Orchard. Right, which I just think is unique, and they've got 450 people in there. When you've been in the rink, what's kind of your experience been, just in terms of the support from the community and the love that they have for this hockey team? Small town hockey, full rinks, winning team, uh, pretty good combo, eh? Yeah, and the the one thing the one thing that I've um, one thing about being the conference manager is that when you walk in with a PGHL jacket on, you kind of got a target on you. And uh, they know who you are. And um, a lot of people, Wellesley, not just Wellesley, but throughout my conference, and I'm sure my three counterparts will say the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you get to know people. You get to know the fans. They'll come, they'll come up to you. They're, they'll ask questions. They're, they're very hospitable. And the volunteer group in Wellesley uh, have been nothing short of spectacular. Uh, they have been absolute pleasure to work with, whether it's to be there to hand out awards or to just be there for the game and to ensure that, you know, you've got a, you're there, you've got a spot to be in the arena and just the hospitality is second to none. And, and just, again, spectators, um, uh, it's, they've been, they've been absolutely fabulous to talk to. And, and and they'll voice their displeasure. This is the one thing that I really like about my role is that they'll voice their displeasure. They'll, they'll disagree with you, but when you have an opportunity that they'll, and they'll listen to you and explain to them from a league's perspective, why certain things get done, then they, 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 they really enjoy that interaction. Yeah that they're not getting it on a computer. They're not getting it. They're not reading it online or in a paper. They're actually getting it from someone who's associated with the league. And that's, that's what I really like about our, about our league is that it's small town hockey. It's high level, but it's the interaction with our paying customer and our fan base that helps build that too. It's really good. And the teams work hard. And I'm talking about, the vast majority of teams across the PGHL work hard to foster that relationship. Uh, talked a lot about the players, talked about the community. Let's talk about the coaching staff. Uh, you know, Ryan Gerber's done a fantastic job as the head coach. Sheldon Gilchrist, Derek Liebold. You mentioned Brock Gerber there a, a minute ago, kind of at the beginning of our conversation. Um, you know, they're effective communicators and they've been able to find the right mix and the right group of guys to really make it work. You talked about the trade deadline a little bit there. Uh, what's your interactions with them and, and what's, you know, what's the sweet sauce there? What's the secret that, you know, it's got to blend between the coaching staff and the players um, in order for it to work. It, it seems like that's happening. I just think they're good communicators, right? Like they've, they, they, they have a style that they, they like to play. They have, they have enough. They have enough grit and sandpaper, and in-your-face kind of players, with a great mix of skill, and they seem to, it's worked. And 
the interaction on the bench, um, they all talk to one another. Uh, it's just, it's been even standing and talking to them during a pregame warm up. Mm -hmm. You can, I can have that conversation. I can have a chat with any one of them. And it's been, it's, it's most enjoyable. You can talk about what certain players, you know, what certain players have been doing, how they haven't been, or if somebody has been on the, you know, if they're kind of laboring or they're hurt or, you know, they're nursing an injury, but you know, it, it, the interaction that I've had personally with the team has been, has been great. Do we always agree on certain things that we may have to have a conversation about? No, but at the same time, um, the common, the common goal, the goal is, you know, to get as far as you can. And I look at it from a, a league perspective is that, yeah, I'm their boy. I'm their guy to go to in terms of dealing with things that at the league level. And again, whether it's the coaching staff or directly communicating with Brock, an absolute pleasure. The guys have been great to work with. And again, may not agree with everything, may not have our disagreements, but, but, but those far out, you know, are, the things that we do and we try to we try to accomplish far outweigh any negatives. It's been great. Let's quickly size it up. Lakeshore full of overtime magic in the playoffs. Clarington very very strong defensively. Stainer an absolute offensive juggernaut. They got 106 goals in the playoffs so far, and we've talked a lot about Wellesley. Can you size it up at all, or is it just you know what? It's a short weekend. Best team wins and have fun with it. Yeah, I really, I don't have a level of expectation because yes, three teams are the same as were that were here last year. Yeah. Um, will it be a Clarington Lakeshore final like it was last year? No, we still have games to play. And uh, I really don't know what to expect going into tomorrow night in Elmira. And, and again, going into uh, going traveling to Windsor or to Bell River on uh or Lakeshore, I guess I should say, on uh, Saturday. on Saturday for a 4 p.m. puck drop. Um, there's going to be a lot of adrenaline, and uh, it should be a blast. And yeah, I'm, to to get us to get us through this weekend to build up for next Friday afternoon at five o'clock for game for the third game of the round robin. It's going to be it's going to be great. What excites you the most about the Woodstock stuff? I can't wait to get there. Everybody's going to be in the same place. Woodstock's done a phenomenal job organizing. Terry Whiteside, obviously the head of the organizing committee, the PJHL commissioner, um, you know, very effective job getting this to Woodstock and getting it done. Um, you know, what do you think it's going to be like when we all get to Woodstock next Friday? I know we got games to play, but I think, you know, a lot of focus is on next weekend and just the energy that's going to be the final four of the last three days. Yeah, I think, I think being in our own, I think being in a PJHL building, Mm -hmm. uh, will be much more effective than where we were in a neutral site being at the University of Guelph last year. Uh, with the access, with transportation on the, with the 403 and the 401 meeting at Woodstock, uh, it provides a lot of opportunities for fans to get in the car and drive and go to a game, go to both games on Friday, go to both on Saturday. And I know Devin Young and the volunteer group with uh, uh, Karen Schneider, who's putting together the, the her volunteer group there, they're working their tail off. And a lot of people have got things covered. And um, I'm expecting, like it is on game day. And again, maybe I'm a little biased because it is in my, in my conference. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but game day experiences in Woodstock during the regular season are, are excellent. They're, you, you know, you're walking into a Navy vet game. Well, now you're walking into the Schmaltz cup final or, and they're putting their, the amount of work that's going into it um, by, by the Woodstock Navy vet volunteer group has been fabulous. And I think they've done a lot of work in behind the scenes We'll all see what it looks like when tables and everything are set up and everything is there to see next week, whether you're buying 50, 50 tickets or you're going to buy, you know, a t-shirt or a hat or a program. Um, it's yeah, I, uh, it's going to be, it should be exciting. And the facility itself with the amount of seats that we have uh, to offer, there's no reason why 
you know, you can't, you, you don't have to worry about coming to the rink and not getting a spot in the building. You'll be able to come in, sit down, have a beverage and, uh, and enjoy yourself and watch some great hockey. Stainer, Clarington, Lakeshore, Wellesley, they will play this weekend. And then everybody goes to Woodstock next weekend, May 12th to 14th. It's all brought to you by Milk Up. Can't wait to get to Woodstock. Really appreciate the time, Steve. Great chatting with you about the Apple Jacks. And we will see you in Elmira tomorrow night. Looking forward to it, Darren. Thanks very much for having me.